Good evening. I'd like to welcome uh, everyone to the North Bend City Council meeting for Tuesday, January 25th. This is a semi-remote meeting. I'm here myself and uh, everyone else is remote. So please join me wherever you are for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome. So, uh, second thing on our agenda tonight is the consent calendar. Uh, we went over this yesterday. Is there anybody that has any uh, thing to possibly? pull off the consent calendar for a later um, discussion, or is there anybody out there to make a motion to approve the consent calendar? I would move that we uh, approve the consent calendar as presented items A through D. Second. Yeah, we have a motion and a second on the consent calendar. Is there any discussion? Okay, all in favor of approving the consent calendar A through D, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Number three on our agenda tonight is public comment. We, we do have some public comments, so we'll uh, go ahead and get started with that next. We have several pu public comment that has asked to be read at the meeting this evening. We'll start with Dino Coolen, 2293 12th Court, North Bend. We've resided on 12th Court near the North Bend Community Center for the past 37 years. The old Bangor Fields has hundreds of kids playing, practicing soccer, while Clyde Allen Baseball Field is extensively used during the spring and summer months. Sometimes the baseball games go well into the night. By using the community center parking lot as a homeless camp, you're putting the needs of a few who for various reasons are in the predicament they're in, right in the middle of hundreds of impressionable innocent kids. The safety and protection of children should be the number one priority of any community. Let's ask one question. Why don't businesses, neighborhoods, industries, and certain individuals want homeless camps near their properties? And yet the city is considering placing the homeless camp in the middle of hundreds of kids. Please reconsider and keep searching for a safer and more appropriate site. Thank you. Second comment to be read into the record from Ashley O'Neill, 2259 12th Court. I know that the council has been put in a tough spot with this legislation. It is now putting, out commu putting our community in a tough spot as well, and especially our children. North Bend has limited space and avenues for our children to participate in activities. And if the decision is made to utilize the parking lot at NBCC for homeless, then we'll be making make a direct hit on what activities our children do have. In addition to hurting these kids spaces, we will be hurting what use of the community center we currently have. The community center could be a great space to have our senior center based at and maybe apply for some grants to help improve the building. But if the parking lot is fenced and filthy, it is just a matter of time, then this could never come to be. Our neighborhood has tried to make suggestions and so far have been shut down on most ideas, but I know there has to be a better place to utilize for the homeless. Please consider taking more time to evaluate the location of this encampment. Sometimes the easiest solution is not the best solution. There has to be a better place that helps protect our children, including your own kids and grandkids. Third comment is from Jeremy Pitts that was also submitted to the work session. Fellow citizens of North Bend, I have been a resident of this city for almost a decade. In that time, I have watched our area's transient homeless population continue to increase and have witnessed the negative effect this has had on our community. As an EMS provider, I have seen firsthand the substance abuse and mental health issues that all too often plague this population. 
As a property owner on Broadway Avenue, I have dealt with the trespassing, obscene outbursts, trash, and human waste that accompany transient individuals. I fully understand the need to comply with state law and support the need for resources to help combat homelessness, but I do not support achieving either of these needs with proposals that negatively impact property owners or the youth of our community. As a father of three, I have been active in youth sports for several years. One of the biggest challenges for youth sports programs in our area is access to suitable practice and game facilities. The placement of a homeless camp in the parking lot of the North Bend Community Center would negatively impact youth athletes of all ages, from youngsters getting their first taste of soccer and t-ball all the way up to the high school baseball players with big league dreams playing under the lights of historic Clyde Allen Field. No amount of fencing or portable toilets will preserve this priceless area for our youth. Honestly, I am shocked that this is the solution our mayor and our council have agreed upon. Placing a transient campground in this location will have a negative impact on the families living in the surrounding neighborhoods, as well as robbing our children of safe access to sports facilities. I implore the council to revisit this decision and place the needs of North Bend families first and foremost when considering any proposed solutions. Thank you for your time, Jeremy Pitts. Another comment to be read into the record from Brenda Granger, 2626 Highway Street. First, let me say I am very sympathetic towards people experiencing homelessness. I am also deeply concerned for our community as a whole. I believe that we must step forward to provide assistance to people experiencing homelessness and not just stigmatize the unhoused. If that means providing designated areas as a first step, then we must. Housing has been an escalating issue over the years. Now with the pandemic, we have unprecedented dwelling shortages as well as unprecedented health risks. I want to say after learning this afternoon that we have an individual living in what is a very unsafe area near our house that I decided to add my voice to the discussion. I know for a fact that this area has a human health hazard, a serious rat infestation. No doubt this individual is at risk for many health issues due to the rats. They are also risking serious injury due to the unstable terrain. They told the peace officer that they were willing to assume the risks because they felt it was safer there than elsewhere. I sincerely hope we can change that. What choice do they have? They told the officer they are waiting for assistance, that they have someone helping them, that they befriended the rats and talked to them. Okay, that might get a chuckle, but it is a serious issue. That is just one unsanitary condition they are exposed to being unhoused. I am in support of mandating exclusive camping sites with amenities, sanitation, and security. That is with the intention that long-term solutions will continue to be in the works. This is a time we are called to act. This housing crisis, crisis is at an apex. At least I hope it's reached its peak. We cannot have people living in bushes or along roads clustered together with no access to sanitary conditions. It is utterly inhumane. It truly hurts the heart to see people living in ways that they are, trying to daily to make the best of it. This person I learned of today is someone who doesn't want to live like this. They are trying to find a way out. We must act decisively and assertively, not to punish, but to assist for everyone's safety and well-being. I don't want people living in unsafe conditions in areas that are not meant to be habitable with vermin or in unsafe wet terrain. Worse than that is the belief that they hold that they are making the better choice for their health and safety while they are experiencing homelessness. Thank you for reading my comments. I sincerely appreciate the time and effort everyone is putting forth to address this issue in our community. Thank you. Also looks, we have some people that are online. Lorna Lewis, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, myself and my husband, Dan Lewis, are both present. And uh, we have some comments that we would like to make. Uh, this is to all the North Bend City Council members. My name is Lorna Lewis. This is my husband, Dan Lewis. We are North Bend residents and local small business owners. I'm also speaking on behalf of my daughter, Madeline Bingham, and her husband, David Bingham, North Bend residents and parents. <clears throat> this is concerning the North Bend City Council's plan to repurpose the North Bend Community Center parking lot for use as a temporary camp area for those experiencing homelessness. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
and the possible retrofit of the community center facility in order to use it as a permanent shelter for those experiencing homelessness. We are residents of the Hillside Terrace subdivision of North Bend, which will be directly impacted by this decision. We are right next door. We are owners of two small businesses that serve both North Bend and Coos Bay. We oppose the use of the community center as a temporary, long-term temporary or permanent accommodation for homeless community members for the following reasons. Number one, the children and families currently living in this neighborhood and using Madrona Street, for example, to learn how to ride their bikes, to ride their skateboards, to walk their pets, as well as the Bangor School Field and Clyde Allen Ballpark for family activities and outdoor time. There are children in nearly every single home in the immediate five block radius of our community center. My five-year-old grandson currently lives here. Because of the issues that are frequently associated with those experiencing homelessness, such as unmet mental health needs, <clears throat> drug use, theft, littering, particularly drug paraphernalia and hygiene items, trespassing, and a host of other issues, we as parents and grandparents say no to inviting these problems into the daily lives of our kids. Number two, the loss of use and the opportunity to revitalize the community center for its intended purpose. Going forward, the North Bend Community Center provides an opportunity for increased revenue for the city. It is a place to bring the community together to share performances, to offer a desirable venue for gatherings and events, weddings and family gatherings, and to promote its use as a resource for the community as a whole. It's currently the only viable indoor option for this purpose in this area. Dan and myself, my daughter, her husband, our household in general, would be glad to give time and effort to help the North Bend Community Center maximize and realize its potential as a more prominent community venue. Number three, the loss, <clears throat> excuse me, the loss of the parking area for Clyde Allen Ballpark and the CCYS soccer banger school field. <clears throat> excuse me, the youth community soccer teams have begun using the Bangor School Field for practices and games. During these times, the entire area is teeming with young participants and their families. This is the first year that the soccer program will overlap with the events at Clyde Allen Ballpark. The ballpark is in use most of the year as it hosts in intramural sports, youth and adult community sports teams, travel tournaments, and often daily practices of the same. During the practices alone, the parking lot is filled with cars. For the games, which much of the time go well into the evening hours, the lot is filled and the adjacent streets and cul-de-sacs are lined with participants and spectators' cars. There is a sense of excitement in the air and you can hear the crack of the bat, the sound of the game announcer, and the cheering fans for blocks. I can hear it from, my, from anywhere in my house. It's an important part of what gives this neighborhood and town its identity and sense of normalcy. Placing a homeless camp in the precise center of these activities will take away much more than just a parking lot. Now, now your, your three minutes are up. I have to interrupt you now, but thank you for your comments. And, uh, you know, just so you know, we, we have not come to a decision on anything at this point. We're going to have a public forum meeting on January 31st at 6 p.m. So we will be listening and discussing all of these things at that time. Okay, thank you very much for your time. You. I only had a tiny bit left to go, but that's okay. Thank you so much. We have another? We do have one more. Mr. Sorensen, it looks like you're on the phone. If you hit asterisk six, that will unmute you. Mr. Sor, there we go. Are you there? Am I on now? Yes, you are. Thank you for. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm Barry Sorensen. I live about a block south of the uh, entrance, the Madrona's entrance to the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree with the previous speaker on all counts. It's a. Well, I watch a lot of ball games from my front yard. 
and and this it's just going to change the character of the neighborhood as well as the alter the function of the community center. You wonder where the ball players are going to park their cars or provide for their transportation. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I hope that you decide against this. I don't think it's a good idea. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for your time. Again, I'm going to say at six o'clock on January 31st, there's going to be a town hall meeting online and all you have to do is go to the city's website and there'll be a place to where you can um, sign up to speak on this. Again, January 31st at 6 p.m. And we invite everybody to come and uh, with with ideas and you know comments about you know potential areas. We're all trying to work together on this thing. And just so you know that the this Light down uh, and community center parking light is just one idea. So thank you very much. Um, we're going to move on now to uh, resolution 3313, which is extending the current state of emergency for the city of North Bend until June 30th, 2022. Mr. Muttmiller, are, are you going to take this one? Um, as stated, this um, extends uh, the current state of the emergency until June 30th. <clears throat> That's the end of <clears throat> the current fiscal year and is in line with the current uh, COVID pandemic uh, escalation. Okay, um, do we need a vote on that? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, uh, I'll entertain a motion for uh, resolution 3313 extending the current state of emergency until June 30th, 2022. I move to Thank approve. Go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. I move to approve resolution 3313, extending the current COVID-19 related state of emergency through June 30, 2022. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this item? Okay, I'll call for the question. Uh, all in favor of resolution 3313, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next is uh, resolution 3314, authorizing the city of North Bend, Oregon Parks and Recreation Department grant application. We discussed this in the uh, work session yesterday. Um, Mr. Miller, do you have any more comments on this? Um, yes, sir. Um, for the benefit of the uh, council and the public, this is uh, up to $40,000 available towards this grant with a 40% match. Um, this would allow the uh, public works and city planner to finish our master plan, which uh, would take us uh, through the next 20 years. So it would require uh, council uh, motion and approval for resolution 3314 for us to apply and move forward because of the matching grant obligation. Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion on resolution 3314. I move okay. that. Go ahead, Suzanne. Okay. I move that we approve the. Um, the staff to apply to the Oregon Parks and Recreation Department for this grant for um, the update of the parks master plan for the next 20 year period. Motion, do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second on resolution 3314 authorizing the city of North Bend, Oregon Parks and Recreation Department to apply for a grant. All in favor say aye. Oh, excuse me. Any any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. This is the night of resolutions here. Resolution 3315, authorizing an, an interfund loan from the Wastewater Capital Fund to the Fire Equipment Fund. Mr. Milliron. 
Uh, yes, Council, this is um, a housekeeping piece to follow up with uh, your last two meetings. Uh, your last meeting in December, you uh, authorized staff to procure uh, documentation for the potential purchase of a fire truck. Then at your uh, first meeting in January, you authorized that purchase. Um, this is now reconciliation of what you took place, but this is a financial resolution. It would approve an interfund loan transfer authorizing the wastewater capital fund to loan $395,000 to the fire department fund for the purchase of the fire engine. Um, this has a significant net savings to taxpayers um, as presented in two previous meetings. Um, so back to you. All right. Um, I will entertain a motion for resolution 3315. Councillor Slater, it looks like you're. Councillor Slater, you're muted. Councillor Slater, you're muted. Well, I'll make a motion we approve resolution 3316 authorizing transfer of appropriate. No. I'll second. What? Resolution 3315. Not 3316. And I'll second it. Okay. We have a motion and a second. And sorry, Tim, but you didn't get the talk from this. Well, I, I made a great motion without a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have any discussion on this? Because it's been made and seconded. Okay. If none, I will call for the question. All in favor of resolution 3315 authorizing an interfund loan from the wastewater capital fund to the fire equipment fund. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, item number seven is a resolution 3316. Authorizing transfer of appropriations for fiscal year 2022. Mr. Milliron, you're up again. Thank you, Council. Uh, finance uh, Director took uh, the Council through uh, this. Um, this is a bit of housekeeping. Uh, this is making sure that our appropriations for fiscal year 22 actually match the adopted budget. Um, this is not a net increase in uh, appropriations. It's simply a bit of housekeeping. Uh, so we're making appropriations in the amount of uh, $29,320,224 via resolution 3307 to match. Um, so as noted, uh, it's necessary to move $1,970,900 as noted in the resolution as published. Okay. Uh, does anybody make a motion on resolution 3316 authorizing the transfer of appropriations for fiscal year 2022? Well, I'd move approval of the resolution 3316 authorizing transfers of appropriations for fiscal year 2022 totaling $1,970,900. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussions? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor say aye. 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 The opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Number eight on the agenda is a public hearing for resolution 3317, uh, fiscal year 22, 2022 supplemental budget. Uh, I will now open the public hearing for a purpose of receiving public input and considering adoption of the fiscal year 2022 mid-year supplemental budget. Do any council members wish to recuse themselves or declare a conflict of interest? Hearing none, tonight's sequence event will as follows. Staff presentation, public comment, close the public testimony portion of the hearing, council discussion and questions, close the hearing, and then deliberate to a decision. 
The city council will now hear the staff report from the finance director. Good evening. One moment while I screen share with you all. Okay. Um, okay, so each year uh, the budget is reviewed at mid-year to consider grants that were unknown at the time of the budget preparation and adoption, as well as to consider other unforeseen circumstances that may require the budget to be amended. In your packet, you will find a revised draft budget, also on the screen, of the fiscal year 22 mid-year budget amendments, which were prepared in accordance with Oregon local budget law. At this time, I will review these amendments by fund, explaining the reason for each change. Starting off with general fund, uh, we have a $45,000 increase to City Hall, and this is for the purpose of installing um, uh, ADA doors at the City Council entrance and an additional amount for doors, uh, security doors to finance and admin. We have a transfer out from the parks departmental unit in the amount of $1,800 to the parks improvement fund to complete an irrigation project. An increase to materials and services in the general fund for a community survey, and that's a transfer in from the ARPA fund. We also have some changes to our inner fund transfers. Uh, it's a reduction of $111,200 um, in total, and that's an increase of 150,000 to 187,000 to the pool fund for the purpose of receiving an OCF grant. It's a reduction from $200,000 transfer to the pool improvement fund down to $50,000, and that's because that fund received $375,000 in grant monies from the Judith Ann Mogan Foundation. And then again, as I mentioned, that $1,800 uh, transferring to the parks improvement fund. So the difference then is uh, placed in reserves to rebalance that fund. Moving on to the gas tax fund, we have a total uh, increase to the streets departmental unit of $223,000. $148,000 of that is recognizing an ODOT COVID-19 uh, relief funding that was received and unforeseen at the time of budget adoption. As well, it's an increase to beginning working capital by $75,000 um, due to a project that was um, not expended in last fiscal year, therefore rolled over to be completed in fiscal year 22. In the library fund, we have an increase of $13,400 in intergovernmental agreement revenue. Uh, it's called E-rate funding and it's for the purpose of purchasing laptops, hotspots, and hotspot service. In the municipal pool fund, uh, we have that additional $37,000 transfer in from the general fund and that will go towards pool operations for the year. In the equipment and construction fund, uh, this money is transferring in from the ARPA fund and it's $147,000 $147,200 towards police cars and $320,000 transferring in uh, for those fire wrap units that were previously approved by council. In the pool improvement fund, there's an additional $375,000 uh, to complete capital projects. And that's a combination of uh, transfers in from the general fund, transfers in from the ARPA fund, and that $375,000 grant from the Judith Ann Mogan Foundation. In the library donation fund, there's an increase of $136,500. 120 of this was a social worker grant and 16,500 is miscellaneous grants. In the wastewater capital fund, you'll see here the interfund loan that was just authorized. So that's a decrease to the wastewater uh, departmental unit and an increase to interfund transfers, moving that money, allowing it to flow into the fire equipment fund, which you see is the next adjustment, receiving the $395,000 into the fire equipment fund for the purpose of purchasing a fire engine. In the traffic control fund, uh, additional ODOT money is anticipated for safe routes to school project. 
And then in the parks improvement fund is that transfer in of $1,800 from the general fund to complete that irrigation project. Moving into the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds fund. This is also known as the ARPA fund. Uh, we are just doing transfer appropriations within this fund. So you'll see that there's no overall change, but just a redistribution of the money within that fund. Um, I would also like to note if council decides to authorize the supplemental budget this evening, please note the revised increase that was presented last night, which is at the top of this draft. So this would be the new budget amount. Um, and this would conclude my staff report. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, at this time, we will hear public testimony, if there is it. Please be advised that the public comment is limited to five minutes per person. Is there any public testimony tonight on the matter? There is no one signed up, Mr. President. Okay, hearing none, we will now close the public testimony portion of the meeting. Now is the time for councilor discussion on this matter. Does any member of the council wish to ask any further questions of tonight's speaker, including staff, or does any member of the council wish to comment on this agenda item? Please be advised that the questions and comments are limited to five minutes per council. So I will open this up to the council. Does anybody have any questions or would like to speak? Okay, hearing none, um, the public hearing is now closed and the city council will deliberate to a decision. Brings us to item nine, which is a recommended motion that I'm not sure. Council, do you have this recommended motion in your packet? Well, I'll make the motion we approve resolution 3316, authorizing transfers of appropriations for fiscal year 22, totaling $1,970,900. It's 3317. Am I on the wrong one? Oh, hold on. I don't think I've got the recommended motion for that one. No? Nope. You're correct. I think you found my typo. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a motion we approve resolution number, or is it 33? 17. 17 for fiscal year 22 supplemental budget appropriations. Motion, do I have a second? Second. second. Okay, two seconds. <laughs> okay, uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any, any more discussion? I'm not sure if we're have, if have any more discussion. So um, all in favor of the motion, state by aye. Aye. All right. Aye. 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 No opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, item number 10 on the on the uh, agenda is authorization to enter into agreement with Johnson Economics for an economic opportunities analysis. David, I think you're on for that one too. Mr. President, Council, uh, the city was awarded a $56,000 grant for an economic opportunities analysis. Uh, we now have to engage with an entity. The city did a RFP, uh, RFQ, and uh, we are recommending approval to enter into an agreement with Johnson Economics contingent upon city attorney approval of the final contract. Okay. Do we have a motion on the authorization to enter an agreement with Johnson Economics for an economic opportunity analysis? Uh, 
uh, recommend approval to enter into agreement with Johnson Economics contingent upon city attorney approval. Second. Okay, hey, we have a motion and a second on this. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I will call for the question. All in favor of authorization to enter agreement with Johnson Economics and our economic opportunity analysis, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item number 11 is approved payment to the city of Sweet Home for officer training costs. Sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. President and Council. Um, this is in line with uh, state law. State law says that uh, if you hire an officer from another agency, uh, within a specific amount of time and where that agency has invested uh, uh, money and time in training that officer um, that you shall reimburse. Um, this is an officer that was subject to the layoffs after the uh, voter approved uh, public safety fee uh, ballot initiative. Um, however, per our collective bargaining <coughs> agreement, um, uh, these officers have certain rights of return and recall. And so, um, we had a position open, we opened that position, the officer returned. And so we are obligated to reimburse uh, the city of Sweet Home uh, $33,291.15. This would be the equivalent of what we would have invested in that officer to also get them certified. So it is a request for the council to approve that payment. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve payment to the city of Sweet Home for officer training costs? Yeah, I, I would uh, move, move, excuse, move we approve the payment of $33,291.15 to the Sweet Home Police Department for the 66% of the training cost for Officer Steve Carlson. Second. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Any discussion on this? We talked about this at the work session. Uh, Okay, I'll call for the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I don't know. I need your votes as well. I also say aye. So, <laughs> item number 12 approve the CMI invoice for data conversion. Sir. Thank you. Uh... Madam uh, Mr. President and Council, um, the Council previously approved the uh, city to migrate its uh, computer-aided dispatch system uh, for public safety uh, from eForce to CMI. Um, that was uh, going to be about a flat cost. However, uh, we had about three years worth of data in that system. And to the police chief explained uh, to you in your work session yesterday, uh, the process to migrate that data. We've already administratively authorized that transfer, which has occurred. However, that the cost uh, exceeds my uh, spending authority. Uh, so we have brought it before you to um, actually authorize um, the physical payment, which is $12,000. Okay, um, could I get a motion to approve the CMI invoice for data conversion? I'll make a motion to approve the CMI invoice for data conversion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Very now, I'll call for the question. All in favor of approval of the CMI invoice for data conversion say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 13 is the award of the fiscal year 2022 state revenue sharing community grants. Uh, we discussed this yesterday in the work session. Uh, we had several people apply and uh, Mr. Millard, would you like me to read the, the results of the, of the uh, meeting from yesterday, what the uh, council had a consensus on? I'm going ahead and showed it on your screen. Okay. 
Perfect. So do you want me to go ahead and read it or you want to read it? Um, I can go ahead and read it for you. Okay, well, thank you. The consensus of the council was $1,000 for the Boys and Girls Club of Southwestern Oregon, $1,000 for the Friends of Goose County Animals Incorporated, $1,000 for the Knights of Columbus Council 1261, $1,000 for the Oregon Coast Community Action CASA, $2,000 for the Nancy Devereaux Center, $2,500 for the Bob Baloney Ranch Incorporated, and $1,000 for the SAFE Project, totaling $9,500, which is the budget amount in your fiscal year 22 budget, $9,500. Back to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Um, could we get a motion to approve the award of the fiscal year 22 state revenue sharing community grants? I'll make a motion we approve the community sharing grants in the amount just read for $9,500. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I will call for the question. All in favor of, of the award, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, now, item number 14 is action of any resulting from executive session. I do not believe we have any action to take on a session this week. So we'll move on to the item number 15, which is the city administrator's report. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President Council. Um, the report is uh, linked off of our social media. It's also posted on the city administrator's page on our website at northbendoregon.us. We also emailed out to the staff, uh, to the news media and the council. A couple of the highlights from the report. The first is that um, uh, we had a uh, tsunami advisory uh, recently. Um, the fire department, uh, along with all other departments, were summoned, and we use that as an opportunity to review our emergency action plan. I will say that uh, each of us agreed in each of our functional areas that there's some things that we can improve upon and work on some further communication and updating, so that will um, uh, continue, and uh, we'll take some time to uh, dust that off and review it. Um, also, uh, we have posted the uh, Main Street uh, Manager Program. This is going to be the revitalization and really the catalyst for our urban renewal and also our tourism activities colliding in our downtown area. Um, so all of our festivals, our events, and so our economic development initiatives um, will all be the focus. And so once this position's in place, uh, we'll be recruiting for a uh, volunteer board, mostly made up of uh, business owners in the area. And we've already had significant interest uh, for folks that want to be on that board. So we really appreciate the uh, state working with us and approving us. Uh, the city now has its uh, certified local government status. And this opportunity can bring significant grants. Uh, for instance, uh, we are looking right now at a $200,000 to $300,000 uh, revitalization grant for a project that's in play. Uh, when we uh, uh, look uh, next year at um, uh, expanding, uh, building the um, uh, workforce housing uh, on the demolished annex, that grant will also be there. So this is going to pay huge dividends back into our community um, through um, uh, these grant opportunities that we otherwise uh, would not have. Um, also, um, the municipal pool, um, just to give you an update, um, all of the um, bids are about uh, finished um, deadline wise. Uh, we're also working with Oregon Energy Trust. Um, uh, everything collided um, to the benefit of us. Uh, we actually will have potential significant rebates back uh, for all of the work. Um, we uh, uh, had come to uh, the council uh, and the council went to the public and made a commitment that if they would fund the uh, maintenance and operations to the levy, uh, that uh, we would make a commitment uh, for securing the uh, capital. Uh, we have $940,000 with an additional, I believe, $10,000 in contingency. And so we're going to be able to do phase one and phase two. Um, 
At the same time, we're unfortunately at the height of COVID. Um, so even if we had opened the pool after phase one, um, it would be closed right now, regardless. Uh, you cannot operate it. Um, so uh, we're going to expeditiously try to get all of these repairs done and then hopefully come back to the council and use the rebate money that will come back to us um, with a plan on the envelope of the building. Our goal is to try to take this gem and preserve it for another 50 years of use. So with that said, um, that concludes my city administrator's report. Uh, back to you, Mr. President. Well, thank you, sir. Um, I'm not aware, do, are there any committee reports? Hearing none, I will move on to council comments. Uh, we'll start with you, Councilor Nordoff. Um, I, yes, thank you. I saw an, uh, an accident at um, Connecticut and McPherson, so um, it was at the height of height of the day, right midday, and I'm looking forward to hearing from the traffic committee on um, lessening the traffic on that road. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Gleason. Uh, yeah, um, I had a a great great interaction with. Um, staff today, uh, Mr. Milliron um, was involved in a conversation regarding the safety of some, uh, some people in the community. Um, I was quickly in contact with Chief McCullough, who was on the ball, um, moving some things forward. And, and I think that considering where we were to where, where we are after a very quick exchange, I, I was super impressed with how fast uh, staff jumped into action to kind of make sure that we had a plan going forward for the, 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 the situation. And um, without getting into a whole lot of detail, I'm just super impressed. And I want to thank uh, both Mr. Milliron and Chief McCullough for um, being such active participants in that situation today. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gall. Yeah, hey, I just want to comment uh, and, and, uh, and kind of give kudos to, to David for giving us such a such a uh, recap on what's happening with the pool. I know that was a biggie to me to get that uh, open back up and, and to, to get it to be that 50 more years. That's, that's a really good comment by the city administrator. So I, I want to make a, another comment that we have made some very very good decisions, uh, kind of dovetailing into Gleason's little comment there. I think the police department is, I think we're gonna be light years ahead of where we were. Uh, I think the fire department is, is I, so I think public safety, we're doing great. Now I will comment that I'm probably not in favor of the, of the suggestion. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a proposal, but the suggestion of the uh, community center as the homeless thing, but we have, we don't want to lose fo focus with the community. We have made some really positive steps forward for the city of North Bend. So, all right, that's all I got. Thank, thank you, Councillor Ball. Uh, Councillor Slater. Did we lose him? He's been having connection issues. Well, we're gonna move on to Councillor Garboden. Do you have anything tonight? I have nothing. Okay, hopefully we can get Councillor Slater back here in a second. Um, the only thing I have tonight is, is that um, tomorrow at the Mill Casino, we're gonna have Coos Bay and North Bend mayors uh, doing a presentation of the state of the cities of Coos Bay and city of the North Bend. And um, I don't know if it's too late to attend. I don't think it is. I think it may be too late to get lunch, but I think that you can just show up down there and have a listen. And I'm not quite sure on the time on that. Mr. Miller, do you have the time for that? Um, it is at 1130. Um, there is a capacity to that room. So I know that they uh, had RSVPs. Um, I do know that um, uh, there is a live stream uh, for that that the uh, chamber very well may uh, share. 
Um, it's our goal to actually record it and then share it back to um, our Facebook and YouTube channels as well. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the clarification on that. And uh, that, that's really all I have. Um, so, have we got Councillor Slayer back yet? Does not look like it. Okay, well, we'll save his comments for the next meeting. Um, so, I'm going to go to item number 19, which is adjourn this meeting. And we will reconvene in a couple of minutes for the Urban Renewal Agency meeting. So thank you for everything and good night from this meeting. Stand adjourned. Good job, Bill. Okay, ready? Tell me one. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order of the North Bend Urban Renewal Agency for Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. So, number two on the agenda is facade improvement grant application for 1987 and 1989 Sherman Avenue Wildflower. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair. Uh, in your uh, packet for the URA, you have a facade improvement grant application. Uh, they are uh, estimating to make approximately $70,000 of upgrades. Uh, we typically uh, look at 50% uh, of reimbursement, not to exceed $25,000. Uh, staff reviews these applications. Obviously, it goes through a process. So if there's any permitting or any other um, zoning issues uh, uh, or otherwise, uh, we uh, will attach those to the award letter with stipulations um, so that uh, we understand the reimbursement process. Um, the most that they're eligible for on this is $25,000. So that's a staff recommendation for approval. Uh, this is budgeted funds. Um, out of the facade grant uh, line item, um, and it would be up to including $25,000 at the discretion of the URA board. Okay. Um, do we have a motion from the URA board on the 1987-1989 Sherman Avenue facade grant application? I would move to approve the request uh, for $25,000. Second. Yeah, we have a motion and a second to approve the $25,000 max on the grant for 1987-1989 Sherman Avenue. All in favor, well, do we have any more discussion? Uh, I, I just want to, I, I just want to comment that it's, that this packet is well put together and they've done they've done their research and, and they're telling us exactly what they're gonna do and, and it looks really good. So yeah, okay, that's all I got. I, I, would, uh, I would agree with uh, Councillor Gall. I, I think what they've proposed in this plan is such an amazing thing for the downtown area to have. Uh, what it could bring to our little downtown, um, the impact it could have could be substantial. And I just really hope that they're successful. Any other comments? Okay. I I, I, um, okay. President ahead. Richardson, yes, I see that there's one note here uh, that's a mural on the side of the building. And I just want to remind people that there, there is um, a project for a mural on the side, on the north side of the Odd Fellows building that had been approved by the Urban Renewal Board uh, probably five years ago for the entire north side. So I'm not sure exactly where their mural was, was planned, but I, I just thought I'd throw that in. Okay. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other comments or discussion? Okay, I will call for the question then. All in favor of the facade improvement grant application 
for 1987-1989 Sherman Avenue for $25,000. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, number three on the agenda is a redevelopment grant application for 1989. That's on page 25 of the packet. Mr. Miller, do you have anything on that? Yes, sir. All right. For the benefit of the uh, board, this is our uh, new uh, grant program. This is the redevelopment grant program. Um, this allows, um, uh, this is separate from the facade. This actually allows interior and other um, expansions and uh, modifications in order to further the economic development um, uh, needs of uh, downtown. Uh, you'll see that there is a complete packet in here. Again, uh, once they start to submit for business uh, um, uh, permits uh, and building permits, um, it goes through much more strenuous staff review. We've already done a cursory review and have provided feedback to the applicants. Um, we know that ultimately to fulfill everything they say in here is going to take a couple modifications of our code. Some of that's already in process. Um, however, um, we've uh, notified the client that um, to fulfill um, some of the um, uh, request um, when you are um, outside um, uh, your establishment, um, it will take us updating our code so that uh, we're more uh, business friendly and open. Um, through the uh, redevelopment uh, program, they're requesting $29,930, which accounts for 20% of the planned inside renovation costs, fixtures, equipment, supplies. Uh, they expect um, to put in a minimum of $124,650. We're also working with them. They have actually worked with CCD uh, in order to uh, go over the application, their finances, their business plan, strategy, and everything. So they have great guidance here um, and great support. And so the maximum under this current application that they could request is the $24,930 which staff is recommending that uh, the board move forward with. Okay. Um, can I have a motion on the, uh, of the redevelopment grant application for $24,930 for 1989 Sherman Avenue a while ago? I move that we authorize uh, $24,930 through the redevelopment program of the Urban Renewal Agency for this project. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is that you, Councillor Gleason, on the second? Yes, sir. Okay, I thought so. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, any discussion under this? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, item number four is the executive director report. Sir. All right. Um, thank you. A couple of things I want to share with you. Um, I've already uh, mentioned. Uh, that um, in the city council meeting, but I'll mention it in this meeting, um, that we've gone ahead and advertised for our Main Street manager. Um, I'm sharing the screen. This is actually a statewide program. Um, there's a lot of uh, moving parts to this. Um, it's not something that uh, we're just willy nilly out on our own, if you will. There's an entire network, not only in the state, but also um, there's a national Main Street network. Uh, we have worked with um, Sherry at the state to get to the point um, that uh, North Bend can move to um, the next level. Um, and uh, we'll be operating uh, for at least the next three years under a uh, city managed program with the goal to ultimately get it um, as a nonprofit on its own feet. Um, so if anyone um, has an interest, feel free to go out and take a look at the uh, Oregon Main Street uh, Manager Portal. Um, and other resources uh, that are available. Um, 
Also um, downtown, a um, lot of great things happening. Um, uh, we are starting to uh, kick off some of the initiatives. We're not going to wait for the manager to um, uh, uh, be hired. We're already uh, cooperating and have been um, for a year now uh, with all of our uh, downtown uh, businesses. Um, we recently um, worked with um, our public works department and our uh, fire department in order to get permission from the state to do a special photo shoot. Um, so Valentine's Day is coming up, so you'll start to see some promotional materials coming out so that you can fall in love with North Bend again. Uh, there will actually uh, be um, a, uh, a drawings for folks to be able to go to businesses and win gift cards. And basically, it allows you to sort of feed off different businesses, meaning that you benefit from one, uh, you make a purchase, you can actually win gift certificates to others. And they'll also um, be um, entwining um, various businesses downtown. Um, Valentine's is couched right between um, Super Bowl Sunday, and they realize that, and they don't want you to uh, forget about uh, showing your love on the 14th um, after um, uh, watching that great game on the 13th. So there's going to be a lot of activity downtown on the 12th. So look forward to um, our uh, city website. We're also, um, we actually just today launched a, um, a Main Street, North Bend Main Street um, Facebook page, and uh, we'll see um, some cross promotions among our businesses and also on our uh, Facebook and uh, web page, and then some of our uh, media blast. So that ends um, uh, my uh, report, and thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, number five is public comment. Uh, I'm not aware of any public comment tonight. So that takes us to item number six, which is adjourning the meeting. Uh, thank you for coming and have a pleasant week. <laughs>